Today we're going to talk about the biggest lie or myth about your gut microbiome. This would be a game changer. If you ask ChatGPT, WebMD, or Google, do antibiotics permanently wipe out the microbiome? The answer you're gonna get is no. That is such a big lie. If you really understood what happens when you take an antibiotic, or something to wipe out some of your microbes or all of your microbes and the consequences of what happens to them, you would think twice about taking antibiotics. Now, I'm not just talking about antibiotics. I'm talking about corticosteroids, as in prednisone. I took that every year for probably seven to 10 years for my poison ivy. Junk foods severely destroy your microbiome. Another thing that was patented as an antibiotic glyphosate. That's the herbicide, Roundup Ready. I mean, I've had antibiotics my whole life and I had no idea the long-term effects that those create. Antibiotics wipe out certain strains of good microbes from your body. What you had as an abundant microbe now is replaced by something else. And that alteration is called dysbiosis. And chances are you have an increased population of antibiotic resistant microbes. I didn't know that. That's huge. And it's very important to know what those strains are and to figure out how you can get them back. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Some of the microbes that are wiped out are called keystone microbes. If eliminated, affects the entire ecosystem of your gut. It can really put you at risk for all sorts of inflammatory conditions, autoimmune diseases, allergies, etc., etc. Now, before we kind of get into it too much, I think the really important thing to know is that 99% of your genes are not yours. They're microbial. You're mostly microbes. You have a much lower percentage of actual human cells. So our bodies have like 20,000 genes. The microbiome has 3 million. So on one hand, if you have the right microbiome, you can have a good immunity. You can have low risk of disease. You can make all your neurotransmitters. On the other hand, if we have an alteration of your microbiome over here and too many bad bacteria versus the good, you're going to have leaky gut. You're going to be more susceptible to autoimmune diseases, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And then those microbes in the wrong place are going to steal your nutrition. So you're going to have nutritional deficiencies. And the question is, how do we get the right keystone bacteria back. There's no yogurt that you can get that has even close to the number of microbes that you have in your body. But the good news is there's really only maybe five to seven keystone species that can help put things into balance. You see a lot of the microbes that are missing that you no longer have can be increased by just changing the environment and feeding the microbes certain things. Prevotella is missing in 70 to 80% of the population. This is the microbe that helps you balance your blood sugar. This is the microbe that normally is supposed to get rid of oxalates. I don't know if you've heard about oxalates, but that's the thing that can increase your risk for kidney stones. And that's the microbe that really gets killed off when you take antibiotics. All right, next one is this weird name, acromanzia. If you're deficient in this, you're not going to be able to produce the mucus barrier that protects you against pathogens. You're also going to have a risk of metabolic syndrome and obesity in 40 to 60% of the population is deficient in this microbe. But hang in there. I'm going to show you how to increase some of these microbes. All right, next one is Fecalibacterium. If you're deficient in this, you're going to have more inflammation and more risk of autoimmune diseases. 30 to 50% of the population is missing this microbe. So many diseases originate in the gut. And now you know why, because if you don't have that microbe that's supposed to protect you, then you're susceptible to getting that disease. 
All right, last one is ruminococcus. 50 to 60% of the population is missing this one. And if you're deficient in it, you're going to lose the ability to digest certain fibers from plants. This could explain why so many people just when they even have a salad or any vegetables, boy, they just get bloating and they do not do well, but they thrive on the carnivore diet. Interesting. So here's the secret, okay? You can change the environment that your microbiome lives in. So let's just go through the list of things that you can take. Polyphenols. You can get polyphenols in green tea and also in certain vegetables, garlic, onions, asparagus. You can change the environment to increase the diversity of microbes consuming fermented things like sauerkraut, kimchi, pickled vegetables, things like that. There's a microbe called Bacteriodes fragilis. This is a microbe that most people have right now, but what's interesting is what it does. It resists tumors and cancer. With this catch-22, you must also have enough vitamin D, and this is why vitamin D is such a powerful anti-tumor, anti-cancer vitamin. And of course, if you already have leaky gut, Okay, there's several things you should know. Number one, zinc carnosine is one of the best remedies. L-glutamine is good. Bone broth, colostrum can help heal a leaky gut. And doing intermittent fasting all can help. Now, I saved the best microbe for last. This microbe is missing in 95 to 96% of the population. It is so important because it prevents small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. It makes seven natural antibiotics that kill only the bad bacteria and leave the good guys alone. It increases the population of other good microbes without even taking those microbes. But even more importantly, it increases a super high level hormone called oxytocin. Now, oxytocin is typically known uh, when women are lactating, breastfeeding, or they're in contractions to release the baby. But oxytocin is also considered the, the bonding or love hormone. It does lower cortisol. It also increases the thickness of your skin. This microbe can be cultivated. So in other words, you can make it into this yogurt compound with high levels of this single microbe to create a therapeutic effect on your body. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do it after an interview I do with uh, Dr. William Davis. The doctor wrote the book Super Gut, where I learned this information on this amazing microbe. So I want to show you this interview with him, and then I'm going to roll right into how to make it. And after you make it, you put it in the fridge, and you just consume like a half a cup a day. And if you want to make more, you actually don't need any more probiotics. You already started with one capsule that you'll mix in with this concoction, which I'm gonna explain how to make it. And then what you do is you take two tablespoons of this probiotic mixture that you made to start the next batch. And you can keep doing this over and over and over. It's actually very inexpensive. But let's just roll right into Dr. William Davis's interview.